So I'm trying a middle parting today. I don't, I don't know how I feel about it. Uh, okay. So you think you might have curly hair or you know you have curly hair, you had curly hair when you were younger, but somewhere along the way after all of the manhandling and straightening and bleaching, now your hair looks fried, limp, frizzy, can't hold a curl. You want to have beautiful, healthy hair and especially you want your curls back. Let me show you how I went from this to this. There's gonna be quite a lot of advice in this video and if you're the note-taking type, then maybe grab a pen and take a few notes. But if you're just going to take one piece of advice from me, that's fine. The only piece of advice I want you to take is please stop straightening your hair. I know that this is probably the hardest one, right? Because straightening your hair gives you control over the outcome and curly hair is very difficult to control. In actual fact, it is uncontrollable and I'm just gonna level with you we cannot control it. It is a wild beast. We cannot tame it. We just can't. Even when you know your hair very well, you still cannot control the outcome 100% because there are still a lot of variables like weather, styling, how much water you use, how your hair is feeling that day, if it's in a good mood, if you gave it enough coffee. Straightening, especially on curly hair, which is more prone to dryness and breakage, is going to cause sometimes irreversible damage. If you have straightened your hair sort of sporadically, then you probably don't have that much damage and your transition and your recovery will be a lot faster, which is fantastic for you. But if you have been a serial straightener and you've been straightening your hair for years, you probably have some damage, some heat damage. This also could be in conjunction with bleaching, dyeing, other treatments like keratin treatments or resilience where you know the hair has been chemically treated. And in that case, that's also very difficult to come back from. And in some cases, you just can't. You're just going to have to cut it off. You don't have to do a big giant chop, cut off half your hair. All you have to do is cut off a little bit at a time until the damage is gone. When you're transitioning from straight hair to curly hair, there's going to be this period where your hair is just not going to look that great. And I'm sorry to have to be the one to tell you this, but you're just gonna have to deal with that. You can deal with it in several ways, either by just putting it up or you can just live with it. As you can see in these pictures, I just wore mine. Really, it's not the end of the world. It might not look very nice, but at the end of the day, it is just hair. So I know that you're in this to have beautiful hair, but the important thing is healthy hair. And that's what your goal is. When your hair is healthy, then it'll look good. So if you're only worrying about the way it looks, then you're not going to continue on this journey. Just like when you're trying to lose weight, if you're only trying to lose weight because you want to be skinny, usually that's not sustainable. If you're trying to lose weight for your health, usually that is. Transitioning is different for everyone. So for me to get my hair to where I really liked the way it looked a lot, it took about a year. But I started to see significant improvement long before that. I actually very rarely straightened my hair. I always wore it curly but I didn't know how to take care of it and I didn't know what products to use and I also didn't really know how to style it to get it to its best. So I was wearing it curly, not looking great, and again, nobody died. My main issue was hormonal changes in my body. I stopped uh, taking the birth control pill and my hair started falling out in clumps. I had massive bald spots. Um, it was a really difficult time. Um, emotionally for me and my body was just freaking out basically and I had actually lost my curl not just because of the hormones but also because I had worn it in a very specific style I was working and I was pinning it back so I would brush it through and pull it back very tightly into a bun all day long and I would wear it like that five, six days a week. Then on the weekend when I went out, I would scrunch in some super heavy product and wear it curly. And really it was it was more wavy than anything. Again, not a problem. I mean, I, I felt beautiful, I felt fine. <laughs> but, you know, I, I really didn't know what I was doing. I learned about the curly girl method and the curly girl method is really awesome because it gives you these sort of rules that you can follow. And when you're starting out, that really helps you. I just want to say that when you're, you, you're more than welcome to do the curly girl method and I do absolutely agree with it because it is really what saved my hair. But at the same time, don't feel that if you break a rule in the curly girl method, the apocalypse is going to start. You can absolutely tailor the method to your hair. If you feel that one aspect of the method is not working for you, that's 100% fine and you can definitely tailor that to your needs. To clean your hair, you're going to use a sulfate-free shampoo. 
sulfates are really what strip oil away from the hair so we do need it occasionally but when you're starting out on your journey it's just a lot easier to avoid all sulfates sulfates are what clean the hair but unfortunately in a lot of shampoos they are very harsh and what they do is they strip too much oil away from the hair and scalp leaving it extremely dry when the curls are too dry all it does is it creates a ton of frizz and in the long term it can actually cause breakage and damage there are loads of cleansers that don't have sulfates like this one the mahogany naturals shampoo this one is a fantastic cleanser it's got everything you need to clean your hair without stripping it another great cleansing option is a co-wash this is one of my favorites, the Only Curls Co-Wash. And what that is, in essence, is a conditioner that has cleaning agents. So this is a really moisturizing one. If you feel like your hair is super, super dry, this might be a better option for you. I don't recommend using only conditioner. So you might hear some people talk about co-washing and they say, oh, you just take a normal conditioner and scrub your scalp with that. I don't recommend that because normal conditioners don't have the cleaning agents that your scalp needs. So I recommend using a co-wash, which will actually have cleaning agents in it. Uh, that is made specifically to cleanse your hair. Otherwise, a gentle, sulfate-free shampoo is perfect. This is another one of my favorites, the Caretaker. Super easy on the scalp, sulfate-free, and cleans the hair wonderfully. Then we have to condition our hair. So the thing you're gonna try to avoid is silicones. In simple terms, silicones are like a plastic that puts a coating over your hair. Now, silicones can be very useful, and they're often used in hair products because they eliminate frizz. What they do is they just smooth it down. The problem with silicones is that a lot of them are very heavy, so they weigh down the hair. They put this coating on our hair that only a sulfate can remove. So it's like a vicious cycle. You use a silicone, you have to use a sulfate. That dries out your hair, you use more. A lot of Curly Girl products will say if they are silicone and sulfate free. You can also use these two websites to check. You put all the ingredients in there and it will tell you if it is Curly Girl friendly or what kind of ingredients are in there so you don't have to do any of the work yourself. This is a fantastic one, the Garnier Coconut Water and Aloe Vera. It's super light, costs basically nothing, and works perfectly. It has great slip for detangling. You're going to hear me mention the Only Curls products a lot because these are some of my favorites. I absolutely love this one. It's got such great slip, smells super good, and again, silicone free. Then you're going to need some stylers. At this point, you've got two options. You can either choose a leave-in conditioner or a curl cream. The only difference between these two is that a curl cream usually has a little bit more hold. Leave-in conditioner is just moisture. Both of them are to give your hair moisture. This is a great affordable option. It's very light and doesn't weigh the hair down at all. This is one of my favorite curl creams, also super light. The slip is amazing and super moisturizing without being heavy. You don't need to apply stylers to your scalp. You're gonna start with a leave-in or cream for moisture, and then you're gonna lock that in with something for hold. That could either be a hairspray, a mousse, or a gel. But the idea is that you're putting moisture in your hair and then you're locking it in, and what's gonna happen is the gel is going to harden into a cast. Let that dry, and then after that, you're going to scrunch out the crunch. If you've never heard this expression, it's very common in the Curly Girl community. Basically, you have this hard cast and it looks absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> but then you're just gonna scrunch it out. And because we don't have any heavy silicone, the gel is basically going to just fall off your hair. And you're gonna be left with this fantastic definition and hopefully volume and, uh, and all the good stuff. The reason for applying a styler with hold is that you're going to seal in the moisture while the hair is wet. The curls will form and the cast will hold them in that shape while they dry. Before you buy a product, read reviews, watch reviews. There are so many. For every single product, I can guarantee there are a few people who have talked about it. What do they say about it? Do they say that it's light, heavy, definition, volume? If somebody says that there's a lot of volume, usually that means it's a very light product. If somebody says it gives really good definition, it might be a little bit heavier, but usually definition means your curls are going to last longer. You can get really good advice from people whose hair is totally different to yours, but if you're looking for product recommendations, maybe look for someone whose hair you think might be fairly similar to yours. Stop using a normal towel on your hair. Normal terry cloth towels are made to absorb a ton of water, but unfortunately they also create a lot of frizz. They're very abrasive. What you can do instead is get a microfiber towel. These are very soft. They also absorb a lot of water, but they don't create as much frizz. In fact, they create very little. Otherwise, don't spend any money and just use a cotton t-shirt. 
any cotton t-shirt will do. All it's gonna do is absorb the water without creating a ton of frizz and without damaging. You can get a diffuser to help you with drying more quickly. Air drying is totally fine, but if you live in a place that maybe it's cold or maybe you don't want to wait a long time for your hair to dry, or if you want a little bit more volume, a diffuser is fantastic. Mine is amazing, I love it. It's the Diva Pro XXL with the XXL bowl and that helps me to dry it super fast. But you don't have to go out and buy this. There are also much cheaper diffusers. You can also just get a universal diffuser head from Amazon or other retailers and just put that on the hairdryer that you already have. And all it's gonna do is gonna speed up your drying time and add a little bit of volume. Sleep protection. Stop sleeping on a cotton pillowcase. It's the same idea as using a terry cloth towel. It's abrasive and it's going to remove all the moisture from your hair. So you can wake up the next day with a ton of frizz and your definition is gone. Use a satin pillowcase or a silk if you're feeling fancy. But satin is perfectly fine. I use it. That's what I use every night and uh, it's very comfortable. It's not abrasive. It doesn't absorb moisture um, and it really helps to preserve the curls. The other option is a satin bonnet. This one is from Only Curls. It's my absolute favorite. I really like this because it helps me to maintain my definition overnight. I put my hair up into it. You can put it loosely or put it into a pineapple, which just means you're putting your hair loose on the top of your head. Kind it looks like a pineapple but you can also just throw your hair straight into that and basically it's just going to keep your hair really soft and moisturized you're trying to avoid breakage and dryness so anything you can do to avoid those that's what you want you could also use a satin scarf you could also make yourself your own bonnet if you know how to sew learn a little bit about ingredients for example i heard one person say that coconut oil was just the most amazing thing and i started to put it on my hair religiously but i didn't actually do much research about it uh, coconut oil is extremely heavy on the hair and it's also very difficult to wash out so i was putting it weighing down my hair and it wasn't really doing anything for my hair because it, it wasn't moisturizing the hair. Oil doesn't moisturize the hair, it just seals in moisture. So I was literally just putting this oil on my hair for nothing, and it's because I didn't do my research. For example, you might learn a little bit about which silicones are water soluble, which means they are washed out with water, which ones evaporate, which ones are heavy and difficult to get out of the hair. Uh, you might learn a little bit about sulfates. There are very harsh ones, there are very gentle and mild ones. There are natural ones. Extra bits that are really helpful, not completely essential. Scalp massager is really helpful if you want to remove buildup, stimulate blood flow to the scalp, and generally just take care of your scalp health. It has these soft silicone bristles. It also stimulates blood flow to the hair follicles, which also increases our hair growth and leads to a healthier scalp overall. But of course, your fingers are totally fine. If you have extensive heat damage or bleach damage or really any damage, you might need a bond rebuilder. There are quite a few on the market. This is a really good one from Curlsmith. Basically, our hair is made up of bond, and these need to be strong in order for our hair to be at its healthiest. When we straighten, do chemical treatments, bleaching, all of those things damage the hair bonds and they need to be rebuilt. It's not essential, but if you're suffering from damage, this can speed up your transition and recovery time a lot. The other thing that is really helpful is deep conditioning. Once again, I'm back to only curls, but this is a fantastic deep conditioner. It is so nourishing. It's got a little bit of protein, but not much. It is mostly about the moisture. And again, if you have heat damage, you really need that extra moisture because your hair is so dry and so frizzy. So deep conditioners are really helpful. The other thing you might need is protein. Protein strengthens the hair. It's not exactly the same as a bond rebuilder. A bond rebuilder is much stronger, but protein helps to give the hair strength and elasticity. So like if I pull down my hair and it bounces up like that, that is because of protein. So I love protein and that makes such a big difference for me and my hair journey. There are some treatments like this one, the Mahogany Naturals Marissa's Curl treatment. If you ever see this a treatment says it's strengthening, usually that means it has protein. So this is amazing because it's like a deep conditioner with a lot of protein. So it's a perfect two in one. I also do my rice water treatment, which is rice water with a deep conditioner. So again, you're perfect, perfecting the balance. And what you want is really moisture and strength. Too much protein, your hair gets dry. Too much moisture, your hair gets too soft and limp. You could also invest in a brush if you want to. This is a really great one because it's really soft and you can uh, brush your hair softly without 
damaging it. Now, when I say brush your hair, I do not mean that you wake up in the morning and brush your hair. When you're wearing your hair curly, you are not gonna be doing that anymore. As you can imagine, when you run a brush through your hair, all you're doing is separating all the clumps and creating a ton of frizz. And that's why most of us have struggled with frizz our whole life because we unfortunately had people in our lives who didn't know how to take care of curly hair. So they just brushed it out and all we did was have massive lion's mane of frizz. But what you're gonna do, what I do, is brush my hair before a shower, before I'm going to wash it, because then I can detangle quite easily. Always start at the bottom of the hair shaft, working your way up with the brush. Never run it from the top all the way down first try. All it's gonna do is get stuck and it's going to pull and break your hair. Most of all, if I can just give you any advice, is just try to get your hair healthy. I know you want your hair to look good, of course. That's exactly what I wanted. I desperately just wanted my curls back. But when I realized that when I was doing things for my health rather than the way it looked, then I started to accept things more easily and not get so frustrated and angry. If your hair is getting healthier, even if it's not necessarily looking so much better, that's much easier for you to accept and be patient. I've seen a lot of people start their curly journey and give up halfway through because it just doesn't look good. And I understand, of course, for those first weeks or months, it's not going to look that great. And you're gonna be frustrated. You're not gonna have control over the way you look. But if you are saying to yourself, I'm doing this for the health of my hair, that is going to get you a lot further than saying, I want to look pretty. The other thing is experimenting. But what I would do to start off is get those four products, a shampoo or cleanser, conditioner, cream or leave-in, and gel, and establish a baseline wash day. From there, you're going to see that your hair hopefully will start to have consistent results. You're gonna to have to do it for a while to get those consistent results. Once you've got those, then you can start experimenting with different products and different styling techniques. And there's lots of beautiful updos that you can try. There are lots of really great protective styles. The last thing that I wanna say is that a good haircut can make all the difference. So there are lots of wonderful curly hair stylists all over the world. If you can't go to a curly hair stylist, that's fine. Go to your stylist and explain that you would like a curly haircut that can look good when it is curly. Hopefully they should be able to do that. Or you can go uh, to my Instagram. I've got a great post on that about 10 tips for a curly haircut. And that's gonna give you some good knowledge and information. I just encourage you to see this as a, a health journey and not just a beauty journey. Of course, your hair will start to look more and more beautiful and more like its old self, but just understand that the health of the hair comes first. And I really wish you luck on your journey because I know that it's difficult at first and I've been there. It was worth it. It's 100% worth it. If you found this useful, please do consider liking and subscribing to the channel. It does help me out and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for listening and see you next time.